Hello again, it's great to be with you. I hope you're having a fantastic day today. We are working our way through Paul's letters uh, to the uh, church in Thessalonica. Uh, we're currently in the first letter, just uh, at the end of chapter 4. Uh, so today we're going to look at verses 13 through to 18, where he says this. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Um, death is a difficult thing to process. It feels terribly final to us when it happens. And those who are left behind can't really help but to wonder what lies beyond it. And nobody knows for sure. We worry about our loved ones who have departed and we inevitably worry for ourselves that we'll make the grade when our time comes. In Paul's time there was a great deal of confusion about this. The idea or concept of resurrection was very appealing to them but they worried about those who had gone before the second coming had actually happened and it still hasn't. Paul wrote about this desperation uh, that surrounded this, this particular subject. We know that um, there, there are documents and there are things inscribed on tombstones that tell us that the kind of things that people were thinking at the time. There's a record of somebody called Theocritus who wrote, there is hope for those who are alive but those who have died are without hope. Catullus wrote, when once our brief light sets there is one perpetual night through which, which we must sleep. And on their tombstones, grim epitaphs were carved. I was not. I became. I am not. I care not. Paul wanted, really, to help people understand uh, what this was all about. So he taught that there is resurrection for all who have died, as he puts it, in Christ. See, it matters not whether the second coming has happened or not. It only matters that we acknowledge that Jesus Christ is our Saviour and Lord. And that's the point of it all, that we know Christ as our Saviour and as our Lord. That's the point of, of mission and evangelism, that those around us come to know him too. And that should be our focus in prayer for those around us, that they too come to know him. So let's do that now. Let's pray together. <clears throat> Lord God, I pray that you would bless us to be a light to those who live in darkness. Bless us to share our knowledge of you with those who have not yet come to hear your name. Bless us, Lord, with wisdom and courage that your fame might spread to all those around us. Help us, Lord, to lighten their darkness and lead people by the example of our living to you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great day. <clears throat>